thank uh, Secretary Austin, General Milley, for being here today to testify. Department. Our most urgent goal continues to be sending the Ukrainians the capabilities they need most right now as a war has shifted to the Donbass and to the south. The coming weeks will be critical for Ukraine. The strategy, but parallel to that, I was conducting your view, Mike. We are now facing two global powers, China and Russia, each with significant military capabilities, both who intend to fundamentally change the current rules-based order. We are entering a world that is becoming more unstable and the potential for significant international conflict between great powers is increasing, not decreasing. When we built this budget, we built it uh, uh, based upon our new national defense strategy. And there is significant investment in a number of issues that, a number of uh, uh, capabilities that are absolutely relevant to, uh, to the competition with China. Uh, primarily we take inputs from the combatant commanders. Uh, for that uh, and second. Well, the stockpiles are something that the chairman and I uh, monitor routinely. Certainly we have the input from each of the services. Uh, and uh, uh, in terms of w working with industry to get them to open up uh, lines and increase produ uh, uh, production, uh, as you know, we, we met with industry uh, early on. Uh, they've, they've committed to doing that. Yeah. Well, we, we base our decisions on the size of the stockpile on our requirements. And, uh, you know, as we look around at our global requirements to, to support our plans, uh, we, we believe that uh, the stockpiles are, are adequate. And uh, if we believe that we need to grow them based upon changing situations or changes in our plans, then certainly uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll do that. We'll take that on and, and make sure that, uh, that we advise the president that, that that's a necessity. I absolutely agree with the chairman. But other than the speed of the weapon, in terms of its effect on a given target, uh, we are not seeing really significant or game-changing effects to date with the delivery of the uh, small number of hypersonics that the Russians have used. I would not say that because he's used a hypersonic weapon that that's going to uh, cause him to be willing to elevate to, uh, to use a nuclear weapon. Um, you know, again, he's, he used uh, hypersonic weapons weeks ago. And, uh, and I think he's trying to create a specific effect with the use of that weapon. Russia decides to attack uh, any nation that's a NATO member, uh, then it's, that's a game changer. Uh, then, you know, by, uh, with respect to the Article 5 commitments, uh, certainly uh, NATO would most likely respond as a, as a coalition in some shape, form, or fashion. And this is a thing that, you know, NATO has, uh, has looked at, uh, what it takes to defend NATO countries. It's a thing that's important to us uh, as well. But as you look at Putin's calculus, uh, my view, and I'm sure the chairman has his own view, but my view is that Russia doesn't want to take on uh, the NATO, NATO alliance. There are 1.9 million uh, forces in NATO. Uh, NATO has the most, uh, most advanced uh, capabilities of, of uh, any alliance in, in, in the world in terms of aircraft, ships, uh, you know, types of uh, uh, weaponry that the, the ground forces use. So this is a fight that he really doesn't want to have. And that would cr very quickly escalate uh, into another type of uh, competition that no one wants to see.